Back in March of 2020, I did a series of videos covering using the OBD2 data on the Model 3. I showed installing the adapter along with using an Android tablet with the Scan My Tesla app. In this video, I'll be giving an update on OBD2. I'm still using the cable harness adapter that I installed over two years ago. However, my tablet is on its last legs and I will be selling it. So I need a new way to access Scan My Tesla data. My OBD Link LX Bluetooth unit is in good condition, however, it will not work with iOS, so I will be selling it. I purchased a new OBD Link MX Plus, which supports PC, Android, and Apple iOS. See my video here in the top right for installation of the wire harness adapter that is needed for this device. So let's open the new OBD Link MX Plus. After removing the plastic wrap from the box, which is pretty compact by the way, we have the Getting Started Guide. Next we have a black zippered storage case. This is nice since the original LX didn't have a case. I usually keep it in the car, so having a compact case is great so the connectors don't get dirty. Inside we have the MX Plus snuggled safely in the thick foam lining. The MX Plus itself has LED indicators for power, OBD link, host, and Bluetooth across the front of the device. On the lower left is a pairing button, which is pressed for the first time it is used with the phone. Underneath we have the model number, and this one is revision 3.1. Also, we have the support website listed here. On the back, we have a 16-pin connector that uses the OBD data port standard. Comparing the original LX to the MX Plus, they are the same size and have the same LEDs on the front and connector on the back. The only difference is the name and the color of the plastic housing. While the LX supports PC and Android, the MX Plus supports those plus Apple iOS. The pricing for the MX Plus has gone up over the years. When I purchased the LX two years ago, it was about $50. Now it costs $90. I don't have pricing for the MX Plus back two years ago, but now it is $140. Let's go to the car and install it. As I did in my previous video, the OBD2 wire harness is located on the back of the center console area. I tuck the wire on the driver's side for easy access. Take the OBD Link MX Plus and insert it into the wire harness connector. It will only go in one way due to the shape, which happens to be in an isosceles trapezoid for those who remember geometry from school. Once connected, press the pairing button on the lower left. You will see the power LED light up and the Bluetooth light will start to blink. The wire and the device can now be tucked between the seat and the center console so that it will be out of the way. Now I can go to the front seat and get the iOS device to continue. Going to the settings menu, I click on the Bluetooth button. Turn on Bluetooth if it is not already on. And in a few seconds, the OBD Link MX Plus will show up on the bottom of the screen where it says Other Devices. Press on it, and it will then be added to My Devices and will show as connected. A screen pops up that says app not installed. This is because the OBD link has a manufacturer's app in the App Store. I clicked on the App Store button and was brought to the screen. However, this is not needed at all for using the Scan My Tesla app, so feel free to skip getting the OBD link app shown here. 
Go back to the App Store and type in Scan My Tesla. Sometime after I originally purchased the app, the creator of the software modified the name to Scan My Tesla with a 3 instead of an E. I suppose there may have been a trademark issue with Tesla or he wanted to avoid a future issue with the company. In any case, the price is $8.99 for the app. Press the price button and then do the normal payment process and then the app will start to download. Now that the app is on the screen, let's press the app's icon to start. You get a welcome page that lists the required hardware, which is the adapter cable as well as the OBD Link MX Plus, both of which I have installed. Next you have some info on how to navigate. Scroll left and right to select different dashboards. Swipe up and down to scroll through different individual gauges. Next, we have the settings screen. Adjust these to the appropriate configuration for your vehicle. I leave the first toggle button to the left for Bluetooth. Next, leave on the left for Model 3 or Y. Next, leave on the left for dual motor. If you have rear wheel drive like I do, use the right option. Next, I switch to miles, then to Fahrenheit, then to foot pounds, and lastly, I leave debug off. If you have any questions on anything in this app, there is a website in the video description and also listed here on the app as ScanMyTesla.com. It will now start in the Gauges screen mode. There are two display modes in this app. There are the Gauges and the Data Screens, which are called Signal Lists. I'll show you both. The first time using the app, it will take a few seconds for the car's data stream to populate the gauges and signal lists. There are options for a single gauge, double gauge, triple gauge, as well as modifying the information that's located in any of these gauges. as well as a battery and power screen, battery and powertrain coolant temperatures, battery capacity, and range numbers, calculated amp hour capacity, and brick voltages. This gauge shows temperatures for all four brakes. This gauge shows state of charge, rear motor power in kilowatts, and battery power flow in kilowatts. Pressing the button with the three dashes brings up the menu. I'll now select Signal Lists. Just below the menu button is a drop-down box to select the different signal screens. There are nine of them. The first one I'm showing is Performance. Use the columns plus or minus on the left side to add or subtract the number of data columns on the screen. This allows you to change the size of the info. Press the DISP button on the right to change the display types, for example gauges, numbers with intensity lines, or just plain numbers. Depending on how you have the phone in portrait or landscape positioning will affect the gauges. The next screen is Speed. One nice thing is that you could use this screen as a draggy box equivalent to do 0 to 30, 0 to 60, 0 to 90 acceleration times. The next screen is Temperatures. This tracks everything from cell temps to radiator info, motor stator temps, brake temps, and targeted active cooling or heating. 
Next up is HVAC, which shows the evaporator target and temps, left and right cabin heaters, and duct temperatures, among other things. The battery screen is filled with a lot of info. As you can see, battery voltage, current, discharge power, max pack info, nominal pack info, state of charge, cell info, and rated range and ideal range. BMS shows cell temp minimum, maximum, average, cell volt minimum, maximum, average, and there are 96 cell groups listing voltage. Totals tracks info for the life of the car. For example, total kilowatt hours of DC and AC charging, regen, distance, and average consumption of energy used while stationary. Lights and miscellaneous gives us info on the turn signals, low beam and high beam headlights, the headlamp position, ride height, and the car's birthday. The all screen does just that. It's a list of all of the signal data that the program receives on one screen. One of the biggest negatives of the iOS version of the Scan My Tesla app is that you cannot add or remove specific data streams on the signal screens. You can't customize any of them. Another missing item that was on the Android version is the trip computer, where you could track specific data items over a period of time and have the ability to reset them when needed. Hopefully these two items will be added in a future update. All in all, it's a pretty amazing app in what it offers. It allows you to track over a hundred specific data items about the car, everything from the particular battery cell groups to how many supercharger kilowatts have been used over the life of the car. Pretty neat stuff. And that wraps up this unboxing and installation of the OBD Link MX Plus adapter and the Scan My Tesla app for iOS. Links are in the video description for all of these items. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one soon.